This is going to be the basis of our jet engine. It's a turbocharger. The second hand turbocharger that hasn't done a great lot of work. It was used on some sort of a development jig. I've got it now and I'm going to develop it into a jet engine. I'll basically go through the parts of the turbocharger so you know what they are. We'll start at the beginning. That's the inducer. That's where the air goes in. Inside of there has a fan, a compressor fan. That compresses the air and blows it out of there. So it's air in, that spins round, air out, compressed air into our engine. In the back end there, there's another fan inside there. That's called a turbine. Exhaust gas from the car engine goes into there. That spins the turbine and comes out of there and goes down the exhaust pipe into the atmosphere. These two fans, that one there, which is a compressor, and that one there, which is a turbine, are connected on one common shaft. That spins, driven by the exhaust gas, which spins this, the air goes into there, the air is compressed and blown out of there. That's basically how a turbocharger works. This is an actuator that's used to control the boost pressure when it's on a vehicle. Inside of here is a spring and a diaphragm. Connected through its adjustable rod onto a linkage inside of there as a valve. When the boost pressure becomes at what's maximum limit on the vehicle, it opens this valve and allows exhaust gas to bypass the turbine through what they call a waste gate. We won't be using that, we've got no use for it at all on a jet engine. That valve will be going to get blanked shut. Turbochargers, when they fail, they nearly always fail because of lack of oil. Inside of here on the shaft, it's got plain bronze bearings. On the top here, that's the oil feed in. Clean, cool oil goes into there, lubricates the bearings under pressure. Not a big pressure, 30 or 40 psi, just enough to lubricate the bearings. Comes out of there and drains away. That must have a free drain into the sump. You can feel the end of the shaft there and there's a little bit of play on there. Be 10 or 15 thou. That's normal for a turbocharger. That always is a little bit of clearance. Once the oil pressure's on, that will go away. So basically, they're the components of a turbocharger. There's only one moving part. That's that shaft with a fan on each end. This turbocharger use as a gas turbine or a jet engine will produce a mass amount of thrust but it will produce thrust and it will run. The one I had on my go-kart on here had 125mm intake, this one's probably 40 or 50 I'm going to take some of the parts off that we don't need and have a quick look inside it and see what sort of condition it is. That's simply pulled it off and that's the, the wastegate there. We don't need that elbow because we're going to have the thrust coming straight out the back. So we'll take this piece off. Once this is off, we'll be able to have a look in there and see the actual turbine wheel. You notice on one end is cast iron and one end is aluminium hot end the cold end that's the cold end that's the hot end don't know how tight these would be not that tight this hasn't only created a lot of work on a, on a turbo that's been worked hard all these nuts and bolts are all badly corroded away that's stainless steel anyway Probably why my hands hurt. Right, so there's the exhaust turbine there, waste gates in there. Inlet side. 
When you're at the airport waiting to go on your holidays and you look at the front of the jet engine as you're walking to board the plane, you'll see that. It's exactly what it is. The compressor wheel is the same as that. And normally going round nice and slowly. What we do to make it work like a jet engine, it still air still goes in there. It comes out of here. Now out between this and that cold side and hot side, normally you've got a, a petrol engine. Petrol engine exhaust goes into there, spins that turbine, turns the fan, compresses the air. What we do, the compressed air comes out of here and it goes into a can, a burner can. Inside the burner can we'll have a, a method of turning fuel, in this case will be propane, in the heat. Once the propane is burning and you start spinning this, you start force feeding it with air and you get a build up of pressure. So you get a pressure in here which goes into there, turns the turbine, turns the compressor, more pressure. It's a, it's self feeding itself, it goes on and on and on. Out of here you get the exhaust which comes out of here, a massive amount of hot gases, that's where you get your thrust from. Because if you've got thrust getting pushed out of there, you've got thrust going that way. I think it was a guy called Newton. Newton's third law of motion. That way, that way. So I'm going to have a little bit of science. It's going to be a good project. This has loads to do engineering wise. There's things to weld, things to make, um, some electronics, ignition circuits. It will make a nice little compact jet engine. I didn't want to get a big turbocharger because then you need a big burner can, a big oil pump, a big oil, it just goes on and on. This is going to be a decent size that I'll be able to pick up and carry in and out of the workshop. I take this bit off, take the oil feed off, and we'll split the turbo, take this part of it, just so I can wash out in here in case there's any nasties in there that's the BL symbol there British Leyland I don't know what this has been used on like I said I haven't done a great lot of work Nice and clean, that's what I want to see in there. No dirt off course, clean oil going through it. You can see the shaft up in there, nice and clean. You can take the inner lead pipe off as well. What you sometimes get inside of here is a little gauze filter. To me it's not a good idea because the block up. I think dirty oil is better than no oil. In this case that's not just a straightforward little banjo bolt. Nice and clean there as well. Clamp bolts that hold this compressor housing on. Once they're loosened, you can turn that housing to any orientation you want. These are locked tight again. Once we take this off, you'll have to be careful. Damage the 
stop things on the compressor wheel. I just want to have a look and see if make sure there's nothing in there that shouldn't be in there. When you take it apart you see nasty wounds on there because it's been touching. This one's beautiful. A little ring in there. That's your compressor wheel. I could take these bolts out of here and take the actual core out. But I don't need to, I'll leave that together. I will be going to take this part off and I'll make a new plate for there. Which means I'll be able to do away with that. Wastegate valve. Basically that is it, that's the heart of the engine. That only one moving part which is that shaft and the two the two fans. This spins it 100,000 rpm, possibly more. And its job on the, the engine will be known, it was probably running maybe one bar, 14 psi a boost. I'll be running it well above that. Two, three bar possibly. The more boost pressure you have, the more thrust you get out, the more power. That's actually where my name double boost come from. I had a jet engine that was built and it wasn't working very well. And I simply says, let's double the boost pressure on the bastard, make it go. And that's exactly what we did. We'll have a quick look and see the back of the yellow mate as well. That's the little valve, the waste gate, and that's the port. It opens up and lets the pressure out of the end source. That's your turbine wheel in there. Hot side, cool side. So that's the actual the heart of it, that's the bit we're going to be using. This hasn't done very much work at all. They often crack around here. This is probably off something like a, a 3 litre engine, maybe a little bit more. Very nice. What you're doing dude you can take the nut off and take it apart but once you do that you've got to rebalance it the balance is really critical as you can imagine something spinning as fast as that <laughs> 